Can a continent often seen as developing truly revolutionize the automotive world? We gathered a panel of seasoned American automotive engineers, ready to debunk any myths about African innovation. Watch their initial skepticism shatter as they witness Africa's groundbreaking self-powered EV for the very first time. Their reactions are absolutely priceless. The room is set like a typical engineering review session, with blueprints on the table, technical monitors glowing, and the sound of pens clicking as the engineers wait for the presentation. At first glance, the panel consists of veterans from Detroit, Silicon Valley, and even former Tesla and Ford specialists, each with decades of experience in electric vehicle design. Their expressions carry both confidence and mild curiosity, but it's clear they expect nothing groundbreaking. One engineer leans back in his chair and smirks, saying, so Africa built an EV? Let's see if it even turns on. The room chuckles softly, setting the tone of skepticism. The presenter doesn't start with flashy slides or corporate jargon. Instead, a single car rolls silently into the room, a sleek design that doesn't scream luxury but radiates practicality and purpose. The engineers look at it like a puzzle, scanning for familiar design cues and quickly comparing it to vehicles they already know. Looks like a crossover, one says, jotting notes. Another adds, I don't see any charging ports up front. For now, their assumptions run wild, most imagining this will be a copycat EV with minor tweaks. Then comes the reveal. The presenter speaks clearly. This is Africa's self-powered EV. It does not need external charging. The room goes quiet, the kind of silence that only happens when trained professionals hear something that defies their experience. A few eyebrows raise. One engineer scoffs lightly. Wait, self-powered? You mean solar panels on the roof? The presenter smiles but shakes their head. Not exactly. It's more than that. A slideshow begins showing layered technology approaches, advanced solar integration, regenerative kinetic capture, and a proprietary energy cycling system. The details are deliberately high level, avoiding giving away trade secrets, but enough to spark curiosity. The engineers lean forward unconsciously, their pens frozen in midair. One whispers to the other, that would mean infinite range, right? No charging downtime. The other replies skeptically, if it works. Now the engineer's eyes move from doubt to intrigue. The presenter presses a button, and the car powers up with no cords attached, its dashboard lighting seamlessly, the motor humming softly. A live demonstration begins. The engineers watch as the vehicle drives smoothly across the testing hall, stops, and powers auxiliary devices like laptops and lamps, all without plugging into any external grid. Murmurs ripple through the panel. You've got to be kidding me. One mutters under his breath. Another says aloud, if this is real, we're looking at a paradigm shift. The presentation transitions into the story of the African engineering team behind the invention. Videos play of workshops in Harare, Nairobi, and Lagos, showing young engineers working with limited tools but limitless determination. Their approach is highlighted, designing for resilience, cost-effectiveness, and sustainability in environments where charging infrastructure barely exists. The American engineers watch intently, realizing this isn't just innovation for innovation's sake. It's necessity driving invention. One panelist, a former GM battery specialist, shakes his head and says softly, they built this because they had no other choice. That's real engineering. Attention shifts to the EV's socioeconomic impact. Footage shows the car being used in rural communities, enabling transportation where fuel scarcity and unreliable power grids once paralyzed mobility. School buses powered by the same system drive children to classrooms. Farmers use the EV not only for transport, but also to power small irrigation pumps in the field. The engineers begin asking sharper questions now, no longer dismissive. What's the expected battery life under constant cycling? One asks. How do you handle heat dissipation? Another follows. The presenter answers each question with confidence, highlighting durability, modular repairability, and low-cost maintenance compared to Western EVs that rely on costly proprietary parts. The skepticism starts melting away, replaced with genuine admiration. One engineer scribbles a note and then laughs to himself, saying, 
We over-engineer everything, and here they solve the core issue we've been avoiding, energy independence. The discussion deepens into technical marvels. The engineers are shown the energy cycling unit, compact, efficient, and designed with readily available materials. Another clip highlights field tests showing how the EV maintains performance after thousands of kilometers without plugging. And the Americans nod slowly, realizing this isn't smoke and mirrors. You know, one says, our EVs need superchargers everywhere. This doesn't need a single one. That's disruptive. Suddenly the conversation is less about disbelief and more about implications. If they scale this, charging networks become obsolete. Another adds, you could sell this in rural America too. Someone else interjects. The energy in the room has shifted completely. From doubt to admiration, the engineers now speak with respect. This could change global logistics, one remarks. Imagine fleets of delivery trucks that never stop for charging. Another says excitedly, the presenter allows the engineers to take the car for a test drive. One by one, they step inside, adjust the seats and take it down the track. When the first engineer returns, he takes off his glasses slowly and says, smooth, responsive, and not a gimmick. This thing is real. The others nod in agreement as they finish their own test runs, each acknowledging the craftsmanship and functionality. Now they're brainstorming openly, their minds racing. You could pair this with smart grids for entire towns. This eliminates range anxiety entirely. Shipping companies would kill for this tech. The camera captures their faces, wide-eyed, grinning, impressed. It's clear their perspective has completely transformed. No longer are they questioning if Africa can innovate. They're asking how they can be part of the wave. One engineer even admits, I feel embarrassed. I thought I'd walk in here and laugh this off. Instead, I want to invest. The conversation turns to global collaboration. What if we combined this system with advanced AI fleet management? Could we adapt it to marine transport? Air mobility might even be possible with enough scaling. Each suggestion builds on the last, showing that the American engineers now see this not as an anomaly but as the future. The final moments are reflective. The engineers, once skeptical, now speak to the camera directly. One says, innovation isn't limited to Silicon Valley or Detroit, can come from anywhere, and today it came from Africa. Another adds, we should stop underestimating places we don't fully understand, because sometimes necessity breeds solutions that leapfrog our most advanced designs. The presenter closes the session by thanking the panel and reminding viewers that technology knows no borders. The final message is powerful. Africa's self-powered EV isn't just a car. It's a wake-up call to the entire automotive world. The engineers stand, some shaking hands with the presenter, others still lost in thought about the implications of what they've just seen. The video ends with the African EV driving into the horizon, its lights glowing, symbolizing a new future of sustainable mobility. Viewers are left with one question echoing in their minds. If Africa can build this, what else is possible? As the engineers linger around the car, they begin opening the hood, peeking beneath the chassis, and carefully inspecting the modular systems designed by the African team. They notice that instead of overly complex wiring harnesses, the system is neatly organized with replaceable modules that can be swapped out in minutes. One engineer points out, this is brilliant. They designed it so a mechanic with basic tools can service it. No dealership dependency. Another adds, that's the opposite of what we do in America. We build cars that force you to come back to us for everything. The realization stings, but also sparks admiration. The presenter explains how African engineers prioritized accessibility because many of their customers live hours away from any service centers. Durability and independence were the foundation of the design philosophy. The panel listens, nodding, realizing that the African approach solved problems they had long ignored. An engineer from Detroit leans back and admits, we were busy making luxury EVs for cities. They were making survival vehicles for the world and survival wins every time. The conversation turns toward cost. The presenter reveals that the self-powered EV is not only efficient, but also drastically cheaper than most Western EVs. 
gasps ripple across the room. You mean to tell me this undercuts the price of a Model 3 while eliminating charging costs? One engineer blurts out. The presenter simply smiles. Yes, because it was never designed to be exclusive, it was designed to be universal. The engineers exchange looks, some shaking their heads in disbelief, others grinning at the audacity of such an achievement. One engineer scribbles furiously in his notebook, whispering, this could flip the global market upside down. Another says loudly, we've spent billions building charging infrastructure. This car makes it irrelevant overnight. The weight of that statement hangs in the air. The panel's energy shifts again, this time toward responsibility. They begin to ask, how can we support this? How do we make sure it doesn't get buried by corporate interests? The presenter acknowledges the concern, explaining that too often breakthrough innovations are stifled by larger industries. But this time, the story is different because the demand across Africa is already skyrocketing, creating unstoppable momentum. The engineers nod solemnly, recognizing that this technology has already leaped beyond theory. They start envisioning scenarios, rural delivery fleets in America, humanitarian aid missions, emergency response vehicles, all powered without external grids. One engineer, visibly moved, says, this is bigger than cars. This is energy freedom. Another adds, this is the kind of leap that makes history textbooks. The presenter concludes the session, thanking the engineers for their honesty and their open minds. The camera captures each of them one last time, faces transformed from smug skepticism to glowing admiration. Their final reflections echo a universal truth. Genius knows no borders. One of them addresses the audience directly, saying, if you take anything from today, let it be this, never underestimate the power of innovation from unexpected places. The African EV drives past the camera, headlights bright, symbolizing not just a vehicle, but a vision for the future. The screen fades to black with the words, the future of transportation has no boundaries. A final call to action appears, urging viewers to share their thoughts, subscribe for more stories of disruptive innovation, and spread the message that the next breakthrough can come from anywhere. The story ends, but the conversation it sparks is only just beginning.